we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, thanking him for this another day's journey. Truly, God has been good to us, and we are grateful for one more time to stand to be able to preach his holy word. I thank God today for all the sickness that I've been through, that he's still working. He's still performing miracles, and he's still making ways out of no way. I thank God that he's able to be, do that all that above everything that we could think of. We would not try to hold you too long, but for a few minutes. In the book of Romans, the first chapter, verse number seven, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. For a few minutes, I want to talk to you from this subject, Grown Folk Christmas List. Grown Folk Christmas List. All here's about. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come with thanksgiving. We thank you, Father, for this day's journey. We thank you for allowing us to stand one more time. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but right now we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We pray now in the mighty name of Jesus that you will hide hold that men and women not see him, but see you instead. Allow me to decrease while you increase. Let your Holy Spirit move in this place, touching somebody, saying, I yield, I yield yet to be saved. The blessing we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, we do only pray. And they all said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Grown folk, Christmas list. My brother and sister, Christmas is just a few days away. The trees are up, the lights are on, most of the gifts are wrapped, and they are either hidden or being tempted to be opened by laying under the tree. As far as this year is concerned, the time for Christmas list is past gone. If your heart's desire was not already expressed, chances are you will not take what you get, you will not take what you get this Christmas. As for me, I am not sure that it's wise to make a list anyway, especially when it comes to stuff. The question is, do we really know what we need? Do we really know, we know what we want, but can we honestly say we know what we need? As I reflect on Christmas, I realize how much faster the season goes as you get older. As a child, the days moving towards Christmas seem like an eternity. You try to find different methods to keep your sanity while you slowly count down the days one by one. Even though you knew that there wasn't going to be much, you still anticipate it coming. As an adult, you stare at the daunting checklist of actions all all to be done before you even remotely prepare for Christmas. Nobody wants to be the guy or the girl who finally gets their lights and tree up on Christmas to enjoy them for only a handful of hours. When I was growing up, I remember simpler, simpler times when Christmas list was very short. Somebody may, someone may have asked, uh, what do you want for Christmas? But the common sense reason you simply said, anything with me is fine. Or you might have said, we, you decide. Uh, don't you, uh, why don't you surprise me? Better still, some will try to get romantic by saying, I don't need anything as long as I have you. But back in the day, we as children were not flooded with TV commercials to, to, uh, touting the biggest, best, and the more expensive gifts money could buy. Uh, 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 even starting in, uh, on how, after Halloween and ending at December the 24th. Even though we somehow got a hold to a seal's Christmas wish book, that's all we could do was wish. Instead, parents made all the decisions about gifts. As far as our family concerned, Christmas gifts were not extravagant. My parents thought about things that we needed to uh, in everyday life, like shoes, clothes, maybe a new doll or a shiny new truck or a revelation basketball. 
But then the Christmas focus was not necessarily on the value of the gift, but rather it was on what they was able to give us. As children, sometimes we would save our change for months so that we could buy some little trinket for each member of the family. I remember the toilet water made in Paris that came in a small blue bottle. But if we look around us today, we will find that Christmas gift and Christmas giving had gotten out of hand. The list of people you feel compelled to buy uh, 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 has gotten so long that you wonder how you're able to afford it. The pressure is on in this present age to buy something for your boss, something for your co-workers, something for the beautician. Something for your mailman, your best friend, your neighbors, and oh yes, don't forget your own family. Grandparents, a, a mom and dad, aunts, uncle, cousin, niece and nephew, and if you're blessed to have a few, even your children. It's no wonder the folks came to church uh, before Christmas and after Christmas broke, busted, and disgusted. Uh, uh, not only that, but there are some who get upset because the gift that they receive is not valued at the gift that they gave. Lord have mercy, I wish they had somebody. So today, at least I hold you too long, I want to give you some relief. You can return all the gifts that you can't afford. There's a better way to take care of that Christmas list. The late, <clears throat> the late Natalie Cole penned a song entitled My Grown Up Christmas List. The song is about an adult who visits Santa Claus that acts not for material things for herself, but for the good things for all humanity. The song has lyric that goes like this, do you remember me? I sat on your knee, I wrote you with childhood fantasies. Well, I'm grown up now, can you still help somehow? I'm not a child, but my heart still can dream. So here's my life, uh, my lifelong wish. My, my grown-up Christmas list, not for myself, but for our world in need. No more lives torn apart that wars would never start. A time would heal all hearts. Every man would be a friend, and right would always win. And love will never end. This is my grown-up Christmas list. What is this illusion called? The, the, the innocent of youth. Maybe only in our blind belief can we ever find truth. There'll be no more lives torn apart and wars will never start and time will heal all hearts. Every man would have a friend and right would always win. And love would never end. This is my grown-up Christmas list. This is my only lifelong wish. This is my grown-up Christmas list. As we think about the song of Natalie Cole, I believe that I can get some witnesses who will agree with me that when I say that we live in a world that's in need. More than a few of you know someone whose life is torn apart, or maybe even your own life. We've come through wars in our recent history, and now we're in the midst of a pandemic that is breathing heavy on our backs. Sin, sickness, and death from COVID-19 is rising on a daily basis. Racism and bigotry is spreading like wildfire in a land that has been called the land of the free and the home of the brave. Can I get a witness? Uh, black on black crime has taken the, the mindset that black lives don't matter. So, so, so there are plenty of broken hearts that need mending. There are plenty of situations that need to be overcome. Instead of material stuff for Christmas, the world needs something greater than stuff. The world needs love. I'm talking about real love. At Christmas time, we buy expensive gifts to express real love. Surely there is a better way to show our love than that. Your neighbor is going through a divorce, don't need the potholers. She need a friend. 
Your co-worker struggling to pay their medical bill don't need a silk scar. They need encouragement. Your child don't need 10 expensive toys. He needs you to teach him a new value system. And this is to understand the re really important things in life. The love of life of a parent and a child. Christmas is a great time to give gifts that really matter. I, I, I searched and I found out why grown folk for a Christmas list is never answered. It's because some grown folk take their list to Santa Claus. And Santa Claus can't deliver. So I prefer what I call the Apostle Paul's Christmas list. The grift that he continually offers everyone on his very long list. In all that he said, he said, in all to all that he in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace of God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't mind this morning, I want you to observe three things about Christmas gift, and then you can go out and count your blessing. I'm talking about one that not under uh, that, that, that not under the tree. First of all, the gift for every believer is, is, is for every believer. And if you thought your Christmas list was long, Paul has a Christmas list. He makes it clear that this gift is for every believer in Rome, everyone. But that it's also for you and I. And in case you think you're not uh, good enough to receive this gift because of what you did last night, what you did last week or in the past, Paul adds to it that it's those who are called to be saints. Paul is not saving his Christmas blessing for the perfect believers on his list simply because Paul would have no list at all. No, he's offering it to all of us. As perfect, as imperfect as we are, Paul wants us to know that the righteousness of God cannot be achieved by human effort. Can I get a witness? It is a gift to those who believe. Paul says in Romans 1, 7, 17, for therein the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. You see, it takes the blood of the crucified Christ to redeem us. We are clothed in God's righteousness, not because we are perfect, but as a gift response to our faith in Jesus Christ. You need to understand that this gift is personal. You didn't earn it. You don't even deserve it because of the things when you chose to be naughty instead of nice. You, 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 you get that after a while on your way home. That's why at Christmas, Christmas time, while we see the baby in the manger, we also need to embrace our Christ on the cross. You see, not only did he carry our sins in himself and were nailed to the cross, suffered and died on the cross, that we, did, that, the, the, that we didn't deserve ourselves, and he, he died just for us. Paul's letter is written in an individual believer rather than the collective church. In his letter, Sagittarius, he does not greet the church of Jesus Christ, but rather each one of us who believe in Christ. Paul gets real personal. He makes it personal uh, for a reason. This letter to the Gentiles, he wants them to know that just because the Jews were God's chosen people, the keeper of God's covenant with mankind and the people through whom Christ came in the flesh. The gospel does not exclude them or us. The Gentiles had heard that Jesus said salvation is from the Jews. That's like hearing that your sister or brother got a computer and you can't touch it. They also knew that in every city Paul entered, he sought out the Jews first. But when the Jews rejected Paul's gospel, he turned to the Gentile. Somebody ought to be shouting right there. He made Christ's offer of salvation personal for everyone who believed. Breaking it down, 
In the six verses of his situation, Paul unwraps the personal gift piece by piece to expose the, the Christmas gift of Calvary and the greatest gift of all, and that is salvation for everyone who believes in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. First, that the benefit of grace, which is unmerited favor. Romans 5, 21 said that even though sin still abounds in our body, God counts us righteous because of our belief in Christ. And as long as we believe that the baby in the manger died on the cross to save us from our sin, we will continue to be the recipient of God's grace even into eternity. That's why we recognize that God's grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. Rather than celebrate the birth of Christ in a manger, we should be celebrating the birth of Christ in us. And, and I, I don't know about you, but what I like about it is that the gift is free. You don't need Visa. Uh, max out your MasterCard, Discover, or your American Express to pay for it. Yeah, you, you don't need no George Washingtons, Ben Franklins, or Abraham Lincolns to pay for it. All because it's priceless. It's free to all who believe. You need to understand that a down payment was made in a manger, but the price was paid out on Calvary. Not only is the gift of grace free, but I think I'll tell you that the gift of grace is one gift that won't return, be returned after Christmas. The second gift is peace. Actually, it's not a separate gift, but rather it's a byproduct of the result of grace. You need to understand that if you are the recipient of grace, it automatically gives you peace. You, 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 you heard the expression, garbage in, garbage out. This is also true, grace in, peace out. If the grace of God is a gift to you through your belief in Christ, then peace is yours as a result of the belief. So let me do a little merchandising and coin commercial uh, from the milk industry. Got grace? If, if you got it, there won't be no white line on the top of your lip. But there will be some praise and thanksgiving coming from those lips. All because grace and peace are something to shout about. My hope for you that who are under the sound of my voice is that you follow God's lead and give some Christmas gifts that matter. Adam and Eve were naughty, but God's gift of his only begotten son had the power to erase a generation of sin if they only believe. Believe in Christ your Savior, and the gift of grace is yours to keep. Believe in Christ your Redeemer, and the gift of peace is yours to keep. This section, the season of Christmas, it's about living with the sense of expectancy, knowing that something great is coming. We think we know everything there is to know about waiting, especially at Christmas time. We wait at the post office to mail our packages. We wait in the department store to pay for our possession. We wait for the day when we can open our gift. But today's message reminds us that the best gift has already been purchased. Delivered and unwrapped. And he's ours to keep. I, 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 I'm encouraged to reflect on and remind you this morning that Christmas was always a part of God's biggest plan. I, I turn it to it turned into a rescue mission only after the fall. But that had to do with the cross rather than the manger. You must understand. That Jesus was born to he, Jesus wasn't born to rescue us. He died to rescue us. He was born to be with us. As we remind ourselves to give gifts that matter in the lives of others. Let's remember to give them the gift that really matters in life. The gift of Jesus Christ. He is the only reason for the season. He's the gift that every grown folk need to have in his or her life. You know, I heard Paul say on one occasion, when I was a child, I spake as a child. 
I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And uh, I think I ought to tell you, every grown person this morning, that it's time to put away your toys. It's time to put away those foolish things that are hindering your spiritual progress. You need to grow up and take hold of the gift that keeps on giving. And if you don't mind this morning, uh, let me tell you what it is to me. Jesus mm, uh, is the all in all of life. He's pure uh, without sin uh, who cannot sin. He is someone uh, to look up to and he is a real hero. I don't want to use uh, all the traditional adjectives uh, to describe him, but Jesus mm, uh, is the one uh, who can look at me uh, and love me uh, when I'm covered with dirt. He is willing uh, to take me by the hand uh, when I turn away from him. Uh, Jesus uh, is someone uh, I cannot describe uh, because there is nothing uh, I know that compared to him. But he takes care of me uh, when I'm depressed, uh, when I'm crushed, uh, lonely and broken. Uh, when I stand before him, uh, all of my shadows uh, will be seen. Uh, he's the one uh, that never leaves my side. Uh, he is more uh, than a friend uh, and a father. Uh, he is uh, my savior. Uh, I can't comprehend uh, his infinite beauty uh, and perfect love. Uh, and if by chance uh, you honor the sound of my voice, uh, if you uh, have not unwrapped them, uh, this precious gift uh, for yourself, uh, let me uh, describe him to you. Uh, he's promised, uh, and at the same time, uh, he's perfection. Uh, he's majesty, uh, and he's mercy. Uh, he's bounty, uh, and he's beauty. Uh, he's loneliness, uh, and he's lovely. Uh, he's value, uh, and he's virtue. Uh, not only uh, is he holiness, uh, but he's our hope. Uh, He's justice, uh, and he's our joy. Uh, he's glory, uh, and he's generosity. Uh, he's forgiveness, uh, and he's freedom. Uh, he's service, uh, and he's our sacrifice. Uh, he got power, uh, and since he got power, uh, he's our protection. Uh, he's salvation, uh, and I don't know uh, about you, uh, but I'm satisfied. Uh, with him uh, he's our righteousness uh, and our redeemer uh, and as I look uh, at the manger uh, and look at the cross uh, I saw something uh, that moved uh, from the mansion mansion uh, to the cross uh, he put clothes uh, on his back uh, yes uh, he was wrapped uh, in swaddling clothes uh, while in the manger but on the cross uh, he put clothes uh, on our backs uh, in the manger uh, he was in the stable uh, but on the cross uh, he put a roof uh, over our head in the manger uh, they had a common worship uh, for some common foes uh, but on the cross uh, he praised his every day I got to get out of here but but I need to tell you that, that Jesus is the gift that we need and I don't know how you feel about it but I need a grown up gift if y'all don't mind let me go down my list 
is uh, what I want. I want the Lord to help me on this journey. I want the Lord to give me a prayer life so I can pray in season and out of season. I want the Lord to give me confidence in knowing that, that trouble don't last always. I want the Lord to give me peace of mind so that one day when trouble is over I can sit down and take my rest I got to get out of here but I got one more thing that I want the Lord to give me I want joy I want his joy because I get his joy the world can't take it away from me ain't he alright Ain't he all right? Ain't God all right? Ain't he all right? He's able. I know he's able. I know he's able. I know he's able. You can have all the material stuff, but give me a hard fix. You can have the material stuff. Give me a mind regulator. Give me, give me somebody who can make a way out of no way. Give me somebody who's able to, to carry my heavy load. Good evening. Good evening. If you don't mind, if you don't mind, I got one more thing that I need to tell you. There's a Christmas song that says Jingle Bells. But if you don't mind, let me say the words my way. All dashing through the snows of life on the open word of God over the fields. And through the valleys we go, laughing all the way, knowing that we shall fear no evil. Joy bells are ringing, making my spirit bright. Oh, what joy it is to praise God and sing joyful songs today. Joy bells, joy bells, joy bells. All the way, oh, what joy it is to praise God and sing in a joyful song today. Good evening, now. I don't know about you, but I gotta move. I gotta move. I'm standing between the mansion and Calvary's cross. The one of these days, y'all don't hear me. I said, one of these days. I got to move. Thank God. Thank God. The man jumped. Put it on their way. But the price uh, will pay that on Calvary. And he all right. Ain't God all right. And he all right. Say yeah. Say yeah. Somebody say yeah. In the words of the temptation, Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas. May God bless you and keep you during the Christmas day. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? He's all right with me. He's all right with me. We're not where we ought to be. But thank God we ain't where we used to be. The real gift, the grown folk gift, is in Jesus Christ. 
it's not the Xbox, it's not the bicycle, or the dog, or whatever your desire. It's in Jesus Christ. And I pray today that if anyone who don't have this gift, that you would just jump up right now and accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. If by chance you want to become a member of Love and Peace, get in touch with us. Well, we'll be so glad to have you. Let us continue to pray for one another. Continue to pray for our nation. Pray for those that have been sick with this pandemic. Pray for those who have lost loved ones. Or here's about. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come with thanksgiving. We thank you, Father, for this another day's journey. We thank you for allowing us to stand one more time. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but right now we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We pray now in the mighty name of Jesus that you continue to bless and keep us in a mighty way. Bless love and peace. Bless the members one by one. Bless not only love and peace, but every church that planted in your name. Strengthen us through this pandemic. Master, I pray right now that you would just heal those who have tested positive. Put your hands on those who have tested negative. And put your arms around those family who have lost loved ones. Let them know that you're still a comforter in their time of need. And Master, We'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. The blessing we ask. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do only pray. And they all said amen. Amen.